Okay, guys, here's a sample one that I made with the last class, period two. Um, and I'm going to walk you through techniques on how to make your poster look professional and good. So, first things first, you have to make a new document. Remember, that's up at File, New. And one thing to make sure is that you've got the long side is 11 inches, page width is 11 inches, page height is 8.5. Some of you guys might have portrait activated. Make sure that you don't... Um, that you don't have portrait. Portrait means it's upside up. We want it sideways this time. Now you may notice my window has a couple of different things different from yours. Um, I've got rulers and I've got uh, I've got primarily rulers out, um, and that's going to help you with your layout. When we're talking about composition, placement is important. So one of the things that you may want is a way to measure out where you're at. So. If you don't have your rulers activated, you're going to hit View, Show Rulers. And I like to do, go one step extra. I like to go View, Show Grid. And you can see it pops up this grid. The, the big lines are at the inch point. The faint lines, you guys can see, there's big lines, there's strong lines, and there's faint lines. It may not come up as well on, on the big screen. But the faint lines are the half inch points. The darker lines are the inch points. It's a little clearer on my screen may not show up as well in the projector. Um, and that helps me lay out where I'm going to put things. To the, um, if you want, you can also attach guides from the rulers. If you click on the rulers, you'll notice you'll get these weird lines. These don't show up in your final piece. These are just to help um, put placement. So I'm going to place these at my third lines. Whoops. Uh, to help guide me in my placements, that looks like my third. Nope. Is it here? Yeah, that looks like the third. You can be more exact if you want. That, I think, is the perfect thirds. But you can also eyeball it like I'm doing. I think it's like a three and a quarter, like seven and a half. So I've got my rule of thirds line. So I'm ready to start laying out. So remember, I identified my words last time. We came up with a draft. We all make choices, but in the end, uh, but in the end, choices make us. And I kind of identified my major words. In this case, I think I did choices and uh, make. So, when you're creating, I'm going to show you the wrong way to do that first. The wrong way to do that is to type it all at once. So notice if I type it all at once. I move it all as one group. I can't do interesting placements. Why? Because it's all one thing. If I resize something, it changes everything, not just one word. So I can't make a single word bigger or better. If I change fonts, it makes everything the same font. So when you're creating, you're going to want to do it in pieces. I would start with your major important words. So I'm going to start with the word choices, and then go into the word make. I make those two things first, and then start laying them out in the important parts. So in my other picture, I laid them out at the intersections, choices and make us. This one, I'm going to choose just to put them right through that center line. And I'm going to go, I'm trying to think of what font matches this mood. I kind of want to keep it a serif font because it's kind of a serious quote. No, that looks too goofy. I think I'm going to go with that one. That looks like serious to me. And I'm just going to recenter. Notice once I've gotten picked a, uh, a font, it shows up at the top of the list. So I can just go back to Copper Gothic Bold. Then I can start filling out the other words. So we all make. I'm going to try and line that up with my words. Let's try centering this time. So one quick way to center is to make sure that you're lining up your dots. 
So I see my dots there. I need to move my center dot there. That's probably way too small. Let me make that larger. So notice I'm just trying to make sure I'm clicking between the two objects and making sure that I've got them both on center. That looks pretty close. I'll just have to go right there. I feel like this has to go over a little bit to line up now. I'll make choices. In the end. Do the next line. But in the end. Choices. And then end that with So by breaking it up and using multiple text objects, I'm better able to manipulate where things are and how things look. Questions on that? So a couple of different weird advanced features if you really want to play it out. If you want to be um, a little bit more off, uh, a little bit more um, unique with your uh, text placements, um, you don't have to do things in straight lines. If you take a shape, for instance, you can take a text tool, click on that shape, and you can type on the inside of it. So if you really want to play around with that, um, that does do some weird things. Um, notice when you've got it, you've got these red tabs. That controls the placement of the text and how far over it is. It's going to start on the inside of your shape, but you can use these tabs to shove it to the outside of your shape if you want. And that works for any shape. I find for the most part, when you're using shapes, you want it, uh, shapes and text, I should say, you want to keep it to regular shapes for the most part. If you use something like a star, let's not do that. Let's zoom in. If we do a star, for instance, and then we use a text shape on it, Here's. It doesn't really work that well because it's really hard to figure out what's typing. It looks cool, but it's not very readable is what I've discovered. Um, so certainly you, uh, you can do any shape that's really standard, something like a circle, a square works OK. Um, Anything that bends in is going to be kind of hard to do. So for instance, um, we already talked about star, but the square star tool also would be weird. Why? Again, because when it goes in, it looks really weird. But with a circle or a square, it comes out a little bit more normal looking. Because I can type a sentence. Hi guys, I'm Mr. Romano. And you can actually read it for the most part. If I type that on the star, that'd be nearly unreadable. Questions on that? Cool. Um, after that, you should use the skills we talked about last week to make decoration choices. You want this to look very clean and professional. You might want to look for inspiration uh, um, with other quote posters. Notice they're not very busy. Some of them concentrate on just the words. Some of them do have some simple shapes added. Things like a banner, things like a line really help. You can even do a simple illustration like the moon wouldn't be too hard here. That would just be a circle with smaller circles on the top. Astronaut would be a little bit trickier. But the moon, the stars, the planet in the background, all those would be relatively simple shapes. Again, here you see banners. And I believe there's even auto shapes for banners. Am I? incorrect in remembering that? Nope, there's totally not an auto ship for banners. Ms. Romano totally forgot about that. But those are relatively easy to make with squares. 
and layering. And if you really want, you can also make it super fancy by putting in that bottom portion yourself. Let's give that a darker fill. And putting it behind, whoops, put it behind the rectangle. And you've got a simple kind of banner look. You can just copy that, paste that, and flip it. Nope, I'm looking for transform. Flip horizontal. You've got yourself a sim simple banner. Questions, comments, confusions now? Awesome, you guys can get started. I'm gonna start passing back your piece, uh, your planning pieces.